Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. Today's webinar will be about designing worlds for comics, games and movies in Clip Studio Paint presented by Tony Washington. Before we begin the webinar, there are some housekeeping items that we'd like to go through. The webinar will be approximately one hour long. All attendees will be muted. Question and answer session will be during the last 15 minutes of the webinar. Attendees can ask questions in the GoToWebinar question box right away. Due to time constraints, not all questions will be answered. The webinar will be recorded. The recording will be shared on social media and will be sent via email to all registrants and attendees. The panelists for this webinar are Joanna Brower, Mari Quinones, myself, and Tony Washington. For those of you who are joining us for the very first time or have never heard about Clip Studio Paint, Clip Studio Paint is your all-in-one solution for stunning, ready-to-publish illustrations, comics, manga, and animations. Learn more at clipstudio.net forward slash n and graphicsly.com. And with that, We'd like to pass the reins of the webinar to Tony and his presentation, Designing Worlds for Comics, Games, and Movies in Clip Studio Paint. Thank you so much. How's it going, everyone? My name is Tony Washington. I am an illustrator, concept artist, and music producer based in San Diego, California. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to check out uh, this webinar today. I really hope that I'm able to show you some techniques that you can use in your own workflow uh, today. Um, I definitely want to start first with just a few pieces that I've done uh, over the past few years, uh, just to be sharing different varieties of styles with you all. Um, here's a, definitely, this is a, a collage piece I did um, for a video game studio who wanted to kind of have all the consoles uh, working together to fight, so it was a lot of fun to be able to bring all those iconic characters together. Um, along with just a few various other styles, you can see more of the DreamWorks style for uh, um, She-Ra, and I wanted to bring in some of that as well with the Masters of the Universe He-Man stuff. Again, with some more here as well, and a darker take on the Masters of the Universe, um, and a variety of music and movie posters that I've designed with these as well, and one of my favorite characters in Spawn. Um, and this piece is actually for the ACLU here in uh, the USA for uh, the Constitution Day that uh, recently happened uh, about a week ago. And this was uh, been painted entirely in Clips and Clip Studio and uh, uh, Paint uh, EX and, and uh, Graphics software. And lastly, before we go into um, some of the techniques, here's just a few various uh, posters I had designed for the Crow. These first two were for. Um, uh, for anniversary posters that I had the honor to design for them uh, uh, for Upper Deck and Miramax. And this one here on the right is a fan art poster, which is the actually the first one we're going to jump into today uh, on techniques. So before we start on every piece, I uh, tend to lay out mood boards just to kind of give myself a general idea of what I'm going to, to do. Even when I'm working with clients, um, I will present mood boards similar to this, just to kind of give them an idea of some of the stuff that has been inspiring me for each piece. And um, and then from there, go into sketches that I'll kind of get ready to show you right now, but um, kind of get an idea of, of some of the different types of uh, verticality within these buildings and subway systems that I've also brought in. Um, it's definitely a little bit more broken up on this end, but you can kind of get an idea of what I was doing. And, but it's really important to kind of have just a, a general sense of direction, when, especially when we're working with clients, so you can kind of see your path as you go into design. So, and with that, um, I wanted to be able to have a lot of uh, a lot of the sketches that I do are done exclusively with just a gel pen, and it's it's. It's a lot of fun to go in and just be very loose with with the art. Um, for me, I, I try to keep shapes very simple. And, and go in and design directly just from my sketches. So a lot of the time, you know, again, it's it, I, I love having just loose lines. I don't try to get too serious out the gate when I'm when I'm trying to design the shapes. 
Um, again, it's just being loose and having a lot of fun, which is the most important thing. And a lot of the time when, when I'm doing perspective or Dutch angles, I, I do use traditional techniques when it comes to laying in a grid, sometimes depending on the piece. But I try to I try to just generally eye where I'm going to be doing um, a lot of that perspective. So you'll see as as I'm getting into this piece here, you can kind of get an idea of where a lot of that stuff is. This is literally a, a loose a loose uh, drawing that I did in in clip. And one of the things I love to do is just using this blue line option here in the layers, um, just so I can have something really quick and easy to go right on top of. Um, when I'm going in and, and, and laying in my lines. Uh, this is for where the, the car was, was in, the, in the actual poster. And then for Draven himself, I uh, had this set up. Again, for that forced, um, almost uh, foreshortened perspective and for the hands a lot bigger than, you know, we can kind of get an idea of the comparison to the head. Um, and then from here, as you start to develop just all those different lines, you can start to see where, um, you know, where you want to start dropping in buildings and things like that. But I'd like to, you know, a lot focus a lot more on the detail of, of that for you all today. So I'll definitely will go into the actual work for this piece and break down how my layers are are designed. Um, so you can kind of get an idea of, of what it would look like um, without all the different layers and details you can kind of get an idea of exactly what i'm doing um let's see so uh you can kind of get an idea of some of the stuff that's happening now uh without all the different uh composite layers and and uh, depth of field layers you kind of see all the different textures that are happening in, in the buildings and i'm definitely going to be sharing a couple of techniques to get this stuff as easy as possible for you um that way you can use this in your workflow maybe and help to speed up some of the stuff that you're doing and I'll focus on, uh, let's focus on this, the middle area. I'll, I'll zoom in here first. And, well, not that close, but, <laughs> but definitely be able to go into here to show you again. So you can see I have a lot of layers. So um, I try to keep things as organized as possible. And um, and when I'm, when I'm breaking all this kind of stuff down, you know, I, sometimes I'll start to, when I'm happy to where something's at, I'll go ahead and just compress a layer and flatten it down. Um, but for the most part, I try to keep, especially when working with clients, I try to keep my layers as open as possible. So if I need to make revisions, I can. Um, and uh, so on this particular area, so you can see there's a lot of like brick texture happening. And I definitely did not do every single one of these bricks because one, uh, one of the conventions I was at, uh, one of the... Uh, attendees ask if I actually hand drew every single brick that you see and thankfully I did not because that would have taken a very long time so I wanted to be able to show you a really quick technique um, on what you could do to help use use this same similar kind of a technique in your own workflow um, so what I have here are I literally just made this one pattern so I just made one rectangle and changed different colors and or values rather and uh, change that out so you can have a good you know basis of of, of what this is uh, and then from here i went in and just replicated it i moved it shifted around you know you can even if you want it you could um if you wanted to add even more to your pattern you could but you can kind of get an idea of what you know what i was doing and you can you can copy and paste that all the way around until you get enough of them to where you could fill out, you know, a particular uh, side of a building or whatever you're trying to des design. You can you can lay out as many of these as you need, and that way it's just a lot easier um, to be able to just copy this entire section and uh, build it into your own set of bricks. And then from here you can add textures or grout or grunge or grime or whatever you want to head to be able to you know create it you know, so they feel like they're their own bricks and you don't have to necessarily put so much time drawing every single one of them um, you know just it all just starts um, just from a single pattern 
and it's very, very streamlined um, for, for that amount of detail that I'm putting into my work. So um, that's definitely one technique that I highly recommend um, you know, you, you use if if or you know, if it, if you see any use for that, definitely. You, and it works for a variety of things too, not just bricks. So, when it comes to to trees or or any kind of foliage or any of that kind of stuff, it really comes in handy. Um, and then for the overall texture for the those buildings um, or for the brick rather, um, I used uh, basically just some paper. <clears throat> that I actually um, made myself. I grabbed uh, just an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. I threw some dirt and water on it, wrinkled it up and let it age overnight. And then from there, I uh, and when I used that, the I was able to have an original texture that I can use because I, I try to keep the brushes that I use to, to stock as much as possible. I do have custom brushes, but for the most part for, for speed, I love using the stock brushes because they're amazing. So I want to use, you know, the, the gel pen as much as I can <laughs> and some of the other oil brushes that are in, in, the, in the Clip Studio. Um, so I, I tend to um, always uh, stick with the core elements from software and then I kind of bring in my own elements. Which So this one was uh, just a piece of texture that, that I made and scanned in and then uh, used the option of multiply uh, to go right on top of that value. So um, again, you can see it. You can see it all within that. That's the same paper that I really uh, did uh, a lot of um, using the uh, like levels to really bring in contrast. You can get those little pieces of grime, but that's literally the same paper that's used across this entire piece. So you kind of get an idea um, of of where you can save time by just using some of the elements that you can create on your own and have something original for your own pieces to be able to you can carry into you know help with your style too um and let me see and for like the subways and things like that i again i use a lot of the same types of texture techniques but just use some other filters that you can use as well inside of clip um just to help distort these kind of things so it's the same paper texture but i just distorted it again uh, just so I can get even more mileage out of the same exact texture. Plus, it gives it a different feeling on metal. Um, so it definitely comes in handy to to just uh, you know streamline your texture process and and the amount of brushes. Used. But it you know it's all, it's all depending on the piece. You know, absolutely, you don't have to use the exact technique going, but it hopefully can help again in your workflow. Um, and then. I'll go forward and now here's a little bit more of the depth of field because value wise, I wanna make sure that uh, the crow can pop forward and a lot of the details, since it's so much, I wanna make sure that um, that he comes forward. You can kind of get an idea, actually the, the, the car behind it was actually not rendered. So just the section that I needed, uh, I did that on there. So let me, uh, Continue to bring in Draven, um, and then you can see that the car um, was I, I designed the whole car based off of an actual Cadillac uh, that I thought was awesome. Uh, this guitar was is is my actual guitar that I, I took photos of to be able to uh, uh, get the right perspective. So I have a, a Strat a Fender Strat here, and I, I was able to just take a picture, and and then I uh, drew right on top of that. Um, so there's definitely lots of elements of just to kind of you know, uh, mixed media kind of stuff, just bringing all these different elements together. And um, similarly, um, for the the environment stuff, um, on this one, both of these posters are gonna be released uh, in a couple of weeks on, I think on October 9th, you'll be able to see these on my website. They're, they're uh, two officially licensed posters, so they'll both be out on October 9th, um, but um, definitely you'll be able to see a, a lot more on the process of these in the coming weeks. Um, but again, it's the same techniques that were used, except the one big difference. I decided to go back and use an old technique called, well, for me, it's old, <laughs> not to date myself too much, but it's called stippling, uh, where you literally just put in dots of 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 uh, of, of color or, or value uh, directly into your art. So that was one of the techniques that was used um, in here. So I, it's a lot of fun, and uh, but I definitely, it definitely took forever to do for to get this one piece wrapped up but i hope you like both pieces and i definitely want to be able to explore some more options with you guys so 
let's go to the next one. Um, and this one is one of my favorite characters from uh, Masters of the Universe. Uh, this is character's name is Orko, and um, truly, truly love this character. And I grew up uh, watching Masters of the Universe, and and uh, you know, I've always wanted to. I never actually drew Orko ever, so I've I've had the chance to do He Man and She Ra, and you know, everybody in between. Um, and when I had the opportunity to do this Orko piece, it was for PowerCon here in California. And uh, I had to I had to dive in on him um, and just to design my own little world because I was so so uh, hyped up to be able to design this for them. So um, so yeah. So here's some of the mood boards that again that I um, present to any any anyone even for myself just to kind of keep my focus on what I'm going to do. Um, and then some of the breakdowns I have right here, but I will go into more detail right now on these uh, along with just a, a color strip um, that kind of give me an idea of how I'm going to use color. And the predominant colors are going to be used throughout the piece. And um, and with that, let's definitely go in and draw some on Orco. So um, again, a lot of the time I will do very loose sketches, um, as you can see. There's still some of the scribble lines in here. Um, and in fact, let me go ahead and blue line that. And I'll just go ahead and. Uh, quickly drawn on this, you kind of get an idea. Uh, once I've got my blue line laid out, I go back in with um, with the gel pen option just to be able to lay in how I'm gonna, um, you know, just right on top of the blue line, just to how I'm gonna lay in all the different shapes and the hat and the feathering that's used in here. But again, I try to uh, I try to keep this just very cell uh, animated looking. So you know, I love that combination of very very painted backgrounds with you know the, the the really clean rendering style and characters I'm always been a fan of that um no matter you know we're, we're you know no matter what the uh the style or or film it is I'm watching I, I just love looking at that kind of aesthetic um and uh definitely a, a, you know it's just a lot of fun to just be loose you know and and push push uh, what what you do I mean it's you know it makes it so much fun just to go in and uh, just design different kinds of uh, you know worlds is uh, uh, that's something I'm extremely thankful for that I can sit here and uh, at, at home and 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 draw these different characters all day. So it's it's definitely don't take it for granted. It's a, it's a lot of fun to be able to do this all day. And um, I won't get too detailed on that, but I definitely want to give you an idea of what I would do for the next pass um, and. This is here is an actual photo um, that of, of just some rocks. And one of the things I wanted to do directly on top of this, that line that you can see underneath, I just paint right on top of it. Um, so it's it just makes it so much easier once I've got kind of a you know a, a layout that I can just go in and just paint in value and color, uh, of course, and right on top of my my uh, my scribbles underneath. And that way I can just start to um, come up with all the different shapes and lighting and all that kind of good stuff as I'm as I'm going in and painting. And um, it makes a lot of fun uh, to be able to go in and just lay in these different uh, these different types of shapes and all that kind of stuff. But one of the things uh, you know, before we get into the the last uh, the last piece for the day. I really wanted to go in and just show, you know, what what you can do just uh, laying in just some rendering. Um, so base render, rendering here, and I'm going to overlay in that texture you just saw just a second ago. Kind of give you an idea of what you can do to so get even more detail and 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 value out of that. So um, here's that photo again, and this time I'm going to use the option overlay, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with, and I will find an area that kind of matches up with what I'm doing. And then I'll go ahead and just take that opacity down a little bit. And you can um, definitely just mask out areas that you don't want to use or or erase like I'm I'm quickly doing here for you today. And um, that, you know, because if you mask it, you can always bring that stuff right back um, if you need the, a certain area or you can copy and paste in even more of these across the entire piece. Um, and then 
I will go under, what I'm gonna do first is underneath the photo. Um, now that I can kind of get a, an idea of where that photo is gonna lay in. It's, it's really easy to go and you kind of use that as uh, further inspiration to kind of paint your shapes in. And you'll definitely see that in the final as I go through that in just a few minutes. But you can uh, actually start to build on top of um, these different shapes. It makes it a lot of fun to go into this, kind of see where, you know, just laying in one photo can really add that much more depth and dimension to just um, some of these <laughs> basic uh, you know, paint strokes. Um, and uh, let me see, in fact, I'll just copy it and move it over here too, so you can see that. And uh, again, just uh, taking that one photo even further. And it would be some of the similar techniques I would do. I have um, a, a pretty big library of textures that I've I've taken or or friends have sent uh, sent me. In fact, the, the the final piece of the day is from a based off of a photo a friend sent me for a video game project that I'll definitely be showing. Um, but the bark and all this kind of stuff, I just go take pictures of trees and and as many pictures of clouds I could find and and, and take myself uh, and just build all this stuff out because it's so much fun to create all these different worlds like this. So. Uh, it's always exciting to to push um, you know what what you can do, <clears throat> and the and these software tools are so incredible to really you know enable what my imagination is seeing. So um, you know it's definitely it's definitely extremely fun. So the the actual final render is this one, but I'm gonna go I'm gonna go backwards so you can kind of see all the all the different layers and how I built this all together. And um, I'm gonna remove Orco first. Uh, I definitely bring him back, but <laughs> I'm gonna remove him for now. And uh, so we can go through um, just a lot of the stuff that's going on on this piece. So um, these are actual uh, photos I found of clouds that I was able to just bring in and and and, and soften and blur, uh, just so one depth. Um, and, and it just helps the, the atmosphere of this piece. You don't see them all because um, they are uh, definitely covered by this this larger mass uh, here in the foreground. Um, but it definitely it really adds that uh, additional atmosphere to these pieces. So um, it's a lot of fun pushing that kind of uh, envelope. Uh, I have a really soft blur on there, but before I get too far, I want to make sure that I can go through this. And again, you can probably see all the layers that, that are happening right now. Um, let's turn these off. So um, almost like fireflies on here. That's what, it, what that was kind of the intention. I was trying to build on that. Um, and I'll take some of these. So you can see how the paint is right underneath some of the photo work. And then I also overlay it on top of stuff too. So you'll see all of that right now. There you go. So you can kind of get an idea of where the brush strokes are at and and where I bring in certain photos and things like that. Like I had to paint a lot of different tree bark areas and and then overlaid in some of the other photos for almost like matte painting uh, that I do for films. Um, but yeah, they definitely get an idea of all the different pieces that go into this. So it's it's all it's all a, a lot of fun to me. Definitely, I wouldn't uh, definitely don't get overwhelmed by the by the amount of layers. It's it's yeah it's it's my preference. I I um I, I definitely use a lot. Uh, uh, I was speaking uh, earlier with Mario, and that some sometimes uh, we we both have friends that will don't uh, don't use a lot of layers. I've got a few friends that only need four or five layers to really get a full piece done. Uh, I I'm not that one, so I can't do that. But it's a lot of fun <clears throat> to be able to do, you know, just the, you have the flexibility of having uh, these machines that can, you know, have tons of layers on them. So it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, so for color correction, uh, as you can see, <clears throat> excuse me, my the, the color is really too much <laughs> on here. So I needed a way, a way of toning things down. 
Uh, and so I, I needed to go in and just set just a few different uh, curves and things like that I needed to, to have um, in color correction to bring into this stuff to, to bring balance. Um, so the entire piece um, would feel a little bit easier on the eyes instead of just uh, just a, a, a you know a, a splash of color everywhere. I wanted to be able to tone it down. So so my values and all that kind of stuff would read a lot better. Um, and it just makes it so much easier uh, in the end to have uh, just a, one way of tying things together because the second it starts to get out of control, you're not your eye is not going to know where to look. And the focal point is Orko, so he's got the most vibrant colors and dynamic uh, values and and even I'll put all the effects and everything I can think of on top of him. So it's important to have that option. <clears throat> so again, it started from just some of my scribbles here in the in the earlier process. And the final uh, final piece uh, looks something you know, closer to this. <clears throat> and we'll get ready to go into the final piece of the day, which is definitely a heavier on um, uh, fully painting with uh, with photos. So definitely want to be able to show you show you all just a variety of what you can do in one software package, where you can do tons of, of uh, detailed line art, um, where you can start to go into bringing in some type of photo composition, and again mix it with line art. Just to kind of give you know even even, uh, uh, even deeper dynamic when when you're designing things, and uh, the next one is going to be based off of um, a photo a good friend of mine uh, shared with me, and um, I loved it so much that I had to do a piece based off of this photo, and <clears throat> uh, this was uh, again painted using the this is going to be painted with these two brushes the oil brush and the oil paint flat brush. And uh, using both of these um, brushes, you know, along with uh, different kinds of photo compositing techniques, uh, this final piece was done. So again, this is the photo, and you'll see. You, I'm going to show you exactly how I placed this in, and then added additional elements off of this photo um, to give you an idea of, of just what one photo can do, and 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 uh, you know, awesome software package like Clip can put together for you. So um let me see so the general idea this is a this is the photo that uh, i have a photo that I, I was using uh for the for the clouds and i just you know brought in i kept painting and softening and painting and uh until i found the the, the form i wanted um for, for the for the clouds and since this stuff is layered there's some soft animation stuff that i'm doing with this photo uh, later that I'll I'll be posting online so you'll be able to see that um, as well. Um, just just for you know because it's I, I love to to animate when I can. Um, but uh, again, here, here's some of just the general layers that were used. Um, color correction is one one thing I, again that I, I always go to, but I wanted to be able to bring the initial photo in first to kind of give you an idea of what. I'm doing with this, and uh, <clears throat> you, so you definitely want to uh, paint in as much detail, you know, just really rough detail that, you know, almost giving an impression of what's happening with Um, with uh, the different um, uh, photos here, so, oops, okay, uh, and then just loosely painting that kind of stuff in, but I'm going to be building it all up to color, so that's that's the, um, you're building into the this type of detail, so you're just laying in as much uh, reference with color as you can. And then as you start to build all of this, you definitely get a better idea of just uh, how you want to be able to push this photo further to help um, with whatever 
uh, needs you, you may have for the piece. So, you know, you, there's areas that you might not even want to keep. Um, so like for instance, down in here, I, I, I did not keep um, the uh, foliage that was here in the photo. So I'll just paint that right out. And continue just to, you know, lay in just basic color. That way I can just build detail right on top of this. And run this right off the canvas or right off the photo. Because in the end, I want to you know, kind of make the photo uh, you know, my own composition based off of it, just using that as a, a point of reference almost. And continue to build uh, using the same, this same photo. Uh, and then, you know, there's elements that you you want, you know that you're not going to use and you can absolutely just remove them from, uh, from the photo. And then continue to just to paint. And, you know, as you, uh, start to see you know where where you're going to go with light and 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 general direction uh, one thing you can do as you're starting to build you want to be able to create a value read through, for everything so um you want know, your foreground middle ground uh you know background elements to be able to have their own room and as as i paint i'm definitely going to show just some techniques on what you can do with that just to help um you know just to help with balance and and composition so when uh if, if for, for instance, since this is based for a game, when this would go in front of an art director or uh, producers or <clears throat> just a general dev team, uh, and we, the entire team can just see your piece, can read every every level that's happening within that and know exactly what they're looking at right out the gate. So there really is no no guessing. Um, so it, it really uh, helps, you know, when, 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 especially in game development, there's a lot of different artists uh, involved um, to be able to help um, them see what your vision is quickly. Um, so I definitely recommend uh, doing, uh, you know, value studies and practice to be able to um, build these different things together because I will be showing you that shortly um, as one thing that, you know, I, I continue to, to practice on just because it's, I think it's crucial when it comes to um, development uh, teams to just, just to be able to be on the same page with everybody and even with final print work, um, it's equally important. A lot of the stuff I've done, uh, even with like Blizzard, it would be build uh, a value study first before I even move the color. That way they approve that, and then I can move into color and and, and light, <clears throat> and then they you know give me the final pass. Uh, so something you know, or, or maybe like Hearthstone or Overwatch that I've done, you you can they could see that and. It's really easy for the you know, for the development team just to go in and approve that before I get too far into details. So um, as I'm painting this, you can um, start to see some of the uh, colors come together. Um, and then uh, as I'm painting this, yeah, you know, I'm starting to see the colors that I'm going to want. So. I'm going to go ahead and change this just a bit. And um, I'm going to go ahead and airbrush in just some overlay. Oops. And uh, bring in just some richer colors because I really want to push this a little bit further as far as the contrast. <clears throat> and the uh, saturation on this as well.
and then use that <clears throat> to create more, even more depth uh, on top of this. Because you'll see in the final piece, it's even even deeper and it's more saturated. But uh, you know, it's all just to push that whole fantasy element of of this of this environment. And uh, I, I continue as you continue to paint this kind of stuff. It's important that uh, I start when I'm starting to look at this background and these start to look like they're competing. I want to be able to start to bring in um, either a you know, color gel or um, which is just you know doing, creating a brand new layer, uh, you know throwing into whatever your favorite option is. Um, to be honest, it's it's there's so many fun ways to combine a layer layer modes um, so I highly recommend just experimenting and finding what works uh, you know best for your workflow um, but for here I would just um, put like a gel of color just to kind of tie my colors together similar to what you saw in the Oracle piece um, and then from there that it just it just helps to bring harmony into your art that we can kind of get an idea uh, of what's what where you can push your color where you can you know uh, push back or bring even more saturation um, and then from there you can start to uh let me see i'll move this to normal we need to push elements back because i can see that the value is starting to get a little competing so i would just push that back just a little bit and then paint on top of that just just by you know, just separating those two alone will start to bring this piece way more pronounced the way more foreground <clears throat> And then I would, um, as from here, I would go deeper into the final since I know we're getting, uh, you know, close to you know, close to time. I want to make sure I can show everything for this. So, um, the uh, so yeah, as you can see, the foreground elements, um, I had my color correction, but I softened all of this together. But one thing you can see was competing was these two, so I needed to go in and find an area that. Um, that would be able to I would be able to show exactly what's going on so I can show you this and here is the this is basically what the value of this piece would look like and if I turn this off you can kind of see that these match right in this area they're pretty close to the sky and this mountain edge so I was like okay I need to figure out what I can do to bring that to where that edge comes off of the sky that we can kind of make out the silhouette of what's going on in this background um, but it still has its own space and it has, still has its own, you know, it feels like middle ground in this particular piece. So that using the clouds as a mechanism and using this silhouette of the shape of a mountain, I'm able to create, you know, a, a shape out of that. That way you, where your eye starts to look at it, it can, it can continue just to, to know what is background, middle ground and foreground elements. Um, and I would constantly slide through this. You can have it as a human saturation or whatever you need to do to, to make it easy. Uh, but it's just a really quick way um, to just to slide between color because I mean I, I can you know you can have a ton of colors but and if your value doesn't read right um, unfortunately it, it would get lost um, so it's important to kind of keep that you know it, in the back of your mind just as you're as you're working more kind of more cruise control with it you just you just turn turn on a you know a, a layer to to, to adjust um, just the value that we can kind of get an idea of as you're painting you, you know where you're going with things and this makes it really easy. Um, just to, to paint as, you, as you're going. <clears throat> and, uh, so you can kind of see a lot of these brush strokes. <clears throat> uh, excuse me. Um, as you can see, a lot of these paint strokes are starting to come together. And you can see where I removed all of the foliage and started to bring in my own ideas of what I could see these rock faces to look like. Uh, I didn't want them to look too... Um, on earth i wanted to kind of feel a little bit more organic in the different shapes that i was doing um so you kind of get an idea of that and for scale um as you can see before i turned it off i put these little characters up here so you kind of get an idea uh, of what it could look like for scale so uh definitely definitely fun just quickly to develop um 
some game some game time part. The environment is definitely game. I wanted to just do this, you know, just for the for the uh, for scale for here. But there is something different than in this scene you'll see soon. Uh, but um, yeah, definitely. I, uh, it's it's so much fun to create, um, and 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 this software because there's so much range you can do, and uh, it's extremely important that you know um, that you experiment, you know, and have fun. At, at the end of the day, that's that, that's truly the most important thing I can recommend is just have fun with it. Um, yeah, I, I, I again get the the opportunity to do this all day, so um, you know I love to be able to experiment and try techniques and. Uh, push what I do as an artist to 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 see what else I could come up with, and um, you know I hope that some of these techniques might be able to work in your workflow, uh, you know as well. And um, you know definitely uh, in a couple of minutes we can answer some questions if, if anything that you may have or see a little bit deeper on. I might be able to do that too. So um, let me um quickly go back through since there's a couple more minutes and. Uh, I go in on this one so you can kind of see a little bit more uh, of the how the rendering is done on this kind of stuff. So, um, let's see. For uh, Draven himself, there he is. Um, I, uh, there's a lot of different layer passes for him, um, so I'll I'll drop this down. You kind of get an idea of of how much is put into it. So this I every one of these values is its own layer, uh, and it's for a lot of this for the printing process, um, which you kind of get an idea in a sense of what goes into uh the different rendering that happens on this particular character and again on the stipplings the same the exact same um technique was done in stipple on on this gargoyle kind of character And uh, again, all of these pieces were done with the same technique. So um, yeah, definitely, um, I wanna make sure I can answer any questions uh, since we're nearing uh, nearing the end, but I, I, please feel free to ask me any questions and I, I'll do my best to answer as many um, as possible. Thank you guys so much for checking out these techniques again. And um, you know, please uh, ask any questions that you may have. Yeah, okay. Um, then let's go into questions. We have quite a few. Okay. Um, so your your artwork is so full of detail. Yes. Um, how long does it usually take you to finish a piece? Sure. Um, so uh, designing these pieces, it does it does depend on the piece. Um, uh, on a piece like this, it, it took about a week to do. So mm -hmm. uh, from start to finish, it was it was a while because um, it's a lot happening. <laughs> so. <laughs> um, you know, but I I tried it on average when I'm with, with a lot of the client work. It's anywhere from uh, two days, two to three days per piece. Um, so I'd say roughly 16 to 20 hours. Hmm. Th that seems pretty quick with so much detail. To be <laughs> yeah, again, that, yeah, it's so important that why I, I wanted to show at least like this technique, because there's this is one of many of them that I've had to just develop um, for my workflow to get stuff done fast. Um, mm. Yeah, it's 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 important to have quick things you could go to 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 be able to build from you know because you can just use this yeah. this kind of method on on a variety of textures and techniques so um, it helps a tremendous amount and um, you know gets gets mileage when it comes to stuff like this because that paper thing I showed earlier is literally that text right here um, and then I can just embellish and paint right on top of that so or you know using the gel pen draw right on top of that. Mm. Um, how do you stop from? How do you stop yourself from overworking a piece? <laughs> uh, that one's a very difficult one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not gonna even lie. I mean, for me, I, I, I once once I can start to see that um, 
the the middle ground background and foreground have balanced and that and they're not competing too much that's mm -hmm. where i can start to tone like all right i'm near the finishing point i can go ahead and you know wrap this up because i could put detail for days on these things but i know at a certain point it's all going to look like the exact same plane um mm -hmm. so i i need to figure out you know i have to find a balance of where i put my detail and where i'll loosen up so you can kind of get an idea where um here it's not nearly as much detail as on the crow it may look like it um but it's not nearly as much as you can see all these little you know, almost not necessarily stipple marks but all these little hatch marks and 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 you know that are on him um as it would be all the way in the background and again using the uh like value just to push stuff back so i can i can really make sure all the foreground stuff has breathing room so it, it, it is a balance and it is difficult but i <laughs> I try to find a spot to where I know, like, okay, look, this is gonna have to wrap up pretty soon. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, yeah that's definitely that I do. Like a personal rule for yourself, where you're just yeah. like, okay, I have to stop here. Yep, it is, it is, because otherwise I'll, I'll go on this, you know, for two, three weeks. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I definitely um, try to, I try to wrap it up at a certain point. Yeah. Um, how do you deal with with deadlines for these kinds of things? Sure. Um, so when I'm working with deadlines, um, a, a lot of the time, uh, it depends on the deadline. So like, uh, for instance, on, on this Orco piece, is this was specifically for PowerCon. So I needed to make sure I had about, I had about a week. So from start to finish, I got it done in about three days um, to get this entire piece done. Um, and, or yeah, between our three days. So I had all of my, all of my iterations and revisions and stuff ready. Um, so I need so I because I, I need to make sure stuff's ready for printing um, and a lot of kind of stuff too. So I, I I know a general timeline when start to finish. I can kind of gauge out depending on where I'm at on time. You know, for every client that I work with, uh, I I kind of lay out um, just my own personal timeline with them, and then I'll I'll start hitting milestones. Um, so on average, it you know again it takes about two to three days per piece. Um, mm -hmm. The heavier poster detailed stuff they'll give me a week to two. A week or two from sketches all the way to you know the final uh, rendering um, so it really it's it, it's it, it depends on the company but I, on average you know that's how I kind of break things down I try to set a personal milestone and uh, it's just you know it's a ton of, uh, uh, it's definitely not a ton of pressure but it's a ton of fun to create you know knowing what my window is that I, I have to just focus and get stuff done um, so it really, uh, really comes in handy to have a deadline because <laughs> it makes me focus faster. So, uh, you know, uh, that's definitely one of the techniques I'd say I would use when it, work, working with deadlines. Yeah. Um, for one, what's the, like this canvas you're using here is like really, really big. What's your usual canvas size for pieces like this? Sure. Uh, on average, my canvases uh, are probably 4K plus. <laughs> so. Um, so there, I, I've gotten accustomed to a lot of the pieces that I do lately are just oversized for trade shows and covers and posters. And so on average, I mean, I try to, I try to keep, keep to 11 by 17 when I can. Um, but on average, a lot of my pieces are start at 13, 19 and go up to, um, uh, a lot, so <laughs> 24, 36 <laughs> and, and, and larger. Um, so, I mean, a lot, a lot, a lot of the posters that I've done. Like the last, like this is uh, this is 2436, but the actual resolution on this is 6K uh, on this one, and the same with this one. Um, yes. So they're they're huge, uh, huge posters, and this one is extremely widescreen. So uh, it, it, this is this one's also at 6K resolution. Um, so it's it's huge. Uh, so a lot, a lot of, unless I'm working in like traditional comic books where it is 11 by 17 kind of aspect, um, then I know what I'm working with. But outside of that, I, I kind of purposely just draw oversized cause I've got the canvas, um, you know, that it can blow up to any size needed. So if a client needs it for a show that needs to be a giant banner, um, then they've got the real estate to use that, that art to be able to go that big and it still hold its detail. Mm. How, how do you keep yourself from zooming in too much? <laughs> um that's actually uh, that's actually tricky i mean for me i try to purposely not zoom in because the second i start zooming in i'm going to want a noodle detail so yeah. i i i purposely try to work in in this this size like this at, at all times 
um because I, I i know the second i start getting in here i know me i'm gonna want to start getting tighter and tighter detail and going to town and a lot of that stuff you can't see in print so uh it's important that i work with the almost print view so i kind of know what's going to show up um and and that that way i don't get to noodling all over the place on these pieces it's, <laughs> it's quickly it's quickly possible so um in your in your usual um process of developing um these kinds of images like where do you start do you ever have trouble like just finding the right angle or um just the the, the piece that you're you're like th that you want to focus on sure um so when i actually don't have my, my initial sketches since the the trade show on this one in particular they were completely open to what i wanted to do but uh, i can a lot of the time i do you know expiration type of um pieces where i would um just do rough sketches and and lay in you know some potential of where else i could take this same orco sketch so for instance the the original one was is like is like this one where you know he's got the got that shape around him in the in the tree um but you know, if i wanted to explore it i can definitely start pushing uh, the envelope with 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 uh perspective and direction so if i wanted to really do like a Dutch angle with Orko, where he's, you know, where, where the camera's looking up at him. Um, I can, I can definitely do that where the tree would be behind him over here, and then that waterfall is coming, you know, coming down at us towards like that, um, where I can get the underside of that tree. And you wouldn't necessarily you can I can have those those other floating waterfalls off in the distance, um, and and have that as another composition. Or if that that wasn't working, then I can go in and and design another one. Um, uh, quickly, I can do another one where it's more more looking at Orco top down. So where the camera is looking down on him, and he's he's about to not not. <laughs> Not fall off a cliff, but float, <laughs> uh, float uh, right over it, and have the waterfall down here. And uh, if it's not working, you know, quite right, I can always adjust since it's in a layer. I can um, adjust the placement for him, and uh, you know, go in and then have um, all those little tiny floating waterfalls, and all the clouds would be down here below him. So there's, I can definitely go in and. Uh, develop a variety of different angles. A, a lot of the time I'll present this to clients when they need to see sketches. Um, but um, then the most part it's, it's, it's you know, I, I try to do this on every piece that I do. Um, and that way there's a good starting point. You know, it's that way I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go with this one and, and I'll just, I'll take that sketch and um, start doing uh, like those, those scribbles that you saw I did earlier in the uh, presentation and I just start building right from that. Yeah. Um, can you show how you um, created the the blue layer? Mm -hmm. uh, because there Absolutely. is a specific function that people yeah. would like to know about again. Yeah. Yeah. No worries. So um, it's. I'll, let me see if I can just. Yeah. I'll just draw it right here. So um, if I was going to again um, pretend these were some scribbles. In fact, let me just do this. since I've got these up. If I was gonna draw, let me see if that works there, yep. Um, the Oracle sketch really quick again, and I wanted to just bring these scribbles uh, into my <laughs> final piece. <laughs> um, there's this feature right here off on the layers that you can go in, just press it once and it brings a blue line. Um, so it, it's it's uh, such a time saver for me to go using just this feature, and you can uh, you can adjust the color how you need, um, of course. Um, but uh, for me, this is this was perfect, so I go straight on top of that. And um, once I've got, and you can continue to draw in blue line if you wanted to. So um, 
and then from there make your make your brand new layer and then you can draw right on top of that so you know it, it's such a, a time saver for me uh when doing like the gel pen or you know any kind of line art based uh comic stuff i i would absolutely use this every single time even the uh crow pieces um i use that blue line uh mm -hmm. again on that one so you, you've shown like very different art styles you have like mm -hmm. the, the more rendered colorful version then you have the crow piece do you have a do you have a preference do you prefer with line art or without line art oh um that is so hard i mean for me i love i love trying to push everything <laughs> so um i i don't I, it's hard for me to choose one over the other i do say i, I think it's fun to kind of balance between the two because it always keeps things fresh and and it always keeps things exciting because I, I you know i I'll start, I'll do this for, you know, a week at a time, then I'm going to miss line art, then I'm going to jump back into line art for a little bit, and then, I'm, oh, I want to go back to matte painting, so let me, let me go, go back to this again, <laughs> so, uh, so I have to say it's so much fun to kind of balance between every technique, I mean, this one's kind of a hybrid um, of that, since it's got a, a combination of the line art and then that matte painting, um, so it it's, you know, all these techniques are fun, you know, I, I just want to explore and experiment, you know, as much as possible for me, so, um, I couldn't I couldn't recommend enough for you know everyone attending this to have fun you know and and try different techniques and see what works best uh, for your own workflow. Yeah, um, you're using a lot of photos. Uh, what are some of the things people need to, especially young artists, need to uh, consider when they use photos in there? In their Absolutely, work? do your best to make do your shoot your own photos if you can, um, because it's extremely important for copyright to not get into any issues where you're using something that's been copywritten. Um, for me, I do as much photo shooting as I can of my own stuff. And if there is a photo that I may need that is um, uh, copywritten or may have, where I might not know, I reach out to that site and, and ask for permission. Um, but I do my best to always paint over everything that I've ever done so there is no issue like that. I don't want there to be any copyright claims or any of that kind of stuff. So it's important um, to make sure to avoid that kind of stuff whenever you can. Okay, um, you use a lot of layers. Mm -hmm. um, do you ever get confused with that, or <laughs> are you the type of person who properly names their layers? Well, I mean, I wish I could say I, I lay them properly. Um, unfortunately, these would everyone could call me out right now on those because <laughs> they're not <laughs> they're not labeled. Um, but for the most part, I do at least label the group so I know where I'm going in the group. Uh, I do try my best, though, honestly, to to uh, uh, label every single layer that I do. It's important because, as you as you said, I, if the second I start getting to 500, 600 layers, I'm going to forget where I'm at. So <laughs> I, I try to I try to label as much as I can. Sometimes I even color coordinate, um, and like I I think I even did it on on this one. Uh, yeah, where I, I I color coordinated the base one um, on, on on this file, so I knew exactly where the starting point was. Um, but, uh, yeah, I try to layer and color coordinate where I can. Um, if I know I'm going to be on a piece for just exclusively, then it works out okay. I can kind of just, just go to town and, 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 and I'll know where I'm at, but if I have to come back to it, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be problems. <laughs> speaking of, speaking of 500 layers, um, what is your, your work setup? Sure. Uh, my work setup, I am currently, I'm working on a, uh, Cintiq Pro 24, um, touch. Um, my PC is a uh, uh, AMD Threadripper 3970X. Uh, um, I have 128 gigs of RAM. Um, there is uh, my solid state is a terabyte. The internal storage is two terabytes, um, and the graphics card I'm using is a Radeon Pro 7. Uh, so I can you know plug up a, a, a few different displays to it, and it really can. It's a it's a beast of a setup, um, uh, and you know that was a huge huge thanks to the teams at Wacom and AMD for for building these things for me. That they they've shown me a great deal of support, so I always thank them <laughs> no matter what. So um, so yeah, I mean th that's what I'm currently working on. Um, I, I don't think you need. I don't want anyone to think that they have to have that setup though. Uh, that to, in order to do this, uh, you can absolutely do this on a, a setup that's not nearly as powerful. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so you can have a setup that's got, you know, uh, 16 gigs or 8 gigs of RAM and, um, you know, 
if you could 16, that'd be great because it just helps when it comes to this kind of larger format stuff. Um, you know, but it, by no means that you need to have a, like a, 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 a space station set up to be able to do this kind of <laughs> stuff. <so. laughs> um, do you um, do you check your work like on different monitors? I do. I've got a dual monitor set up, so I've got a 27 inch off to my left when I'm working, um, so I can kind of calibrate between the two, so I can see. Um, again, sometimes staring at the Cintiq, it, 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 I want to make sure that no matter where it's at, the colors line up where, wherever I'm working. So, um, you know, so yeah, I do. I, I have a dual monitor set up to, to be able to work on that. Yeah. Do you have your, your Cintiq more vertical or more flat? It's more flat. Yeah, I, I have, have it on yeah. that um, the ergonomic kind of arm. So yeah. I, I, have, I have that whole setup where I can just tilt it to wherever needed. But I used to I used to work uh, uh, well I still kind of were standing since it could raise all the way up and I can stand and work on top of it. Mm -hmm. um, I work in, in various ways throughout the day. Oh, okay, so just so it doesn't get boring and yep, you take care of your back and everything. That too. <laughs> I'm not getting any younger. So. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah. Let's finish off with a final question. Um. That we often get. Do you have any tips for people who are just starting out? Um, by all means, the, 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 my highest thing I could recommend is just is, is always try to figure, you know, study fundamentals of, of, of figure drawing or whatever inspires you most as an artist. You know, try to figure out the fundamentals of that um, and, and, you know, and work your way into digital if you can. Um, for me, I still it, it's I, I am pretty much digital almost exclusively nowadays. I, I do occasionally we'll do pastels and pencil and. Um, but you know, I highly, I still use all the same techniques that I learned in school, um, and uh, and bring that into my digital art. So a lot of the fundamentals of shapes and 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 you know just the, the anatomy and 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 how lighting you know, works and all that kind of stuff. I still use a lot of the fundamentals I learned from high school. Um, but you know, you use that whatever you can, even if it's. I mean, the internet is is so powerful now where you can find you know amazing references and 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 things to study even tutorials online so i highly recommend just getting a lot of the fundamental traditional techniques under your belt and then use that when um you know moving into digital art um because that's exactly how i got started you know I, I learned i learned photoshop at 18 um you know so i'm 43 now so i've been working on this stuff for a little bit um but it's 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 been a lot of fun just you know always incorporating my original stuff uh, into there, so I couldn't recommend enough for anyone who wants to get into this kind of art. Um, practice fundamentals as much as you can, because it's, it's, you can always use that when with digital. You find that workflow, that speed will happen so much faster uh, when you're using traditional art. So I, I do hope that helps, but um, I couldn't recommend that enough. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. For the webinar today. Yeah, and thank you guys. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Tony. Thank you so much, Joanna. This has been an amazing webinar. Uh, it's been so interesting um, that we have all learned uh, this technique of photo montage and also mix it with illustration, uh, matte painting. It's something that maybe some of, some of you didn't know, and it's uh, it's a whole world, especially if you like to create oneric worlds and, and fantasy worlds. It's it's such a great technique to start with and then to create your own worlds. Um, thanks so much, uh, Tony. Oh, thank you. Um, and before we leave, let me just share with you one last piece of information. Learn more about Cliff Studio Paint. Please visit cliffstudio.net forward slash n and graphicsly.com. And just a reminder for anybody of you who wants to rewatch this webinar. This will be posted on our YouTube channel, Graphicsly, and also the new Clip Studio Paint channel called Clip Studio Paint Channel. So go there, subscribe if you haven't. Also, for more information about Tony Washington, please follow him on his social media, Twitter, Instagram, and his website, T Washington Art, Tony Washington Art, and his website, TonyWashingtonArt.com. So with that, uh, we are finishing this webinar. Thank you all for attending today. And uh, thank you so much, Tony. Uh, thank you, guys. Thank you, Joanna. Of course, of course.
So you. see you on our next webinar and take care. Bye-bye. See you. See you. Bye.